actionfigureresource.com. Yesterday's toys, today's treasures. So which was my first hot toy? Me being Alex Shaw, writer and reviewer for Action Figure Resource. I am a huge Captain America fan now. Since Chris Evans' turn in the first Avenger in 2011, he has had a big impact on me, and as of The Winter Soldier, he finally eclipsed Iron Man, who as of 2008, eclipsed Batman, who had eclipsed Wolverine before him, who had eclipsed Spider-Man as my abiding favourite superhero. To me, Cap embodies everything Superman should be and more. He was born the little guy, he had a hard life, he never backs down from bullies, and he wants to do what feels like the right thing at all times. He's also flawed and lonely, has trouble relating to regular people, and cares deeply for the few he is close to. He is the introvert's superhero, and yet so many of his costumes over the years have been loud and spangly, suggesting an extrovert. He only ditched the ridiculous bell-bottom pirate boots at the turn of the century. His colours are frequently garish, and almost always the red, white and blue of America. He thus ends up looking more like a mascot than a soldier, something explored in his movies repeatedly. Not having an animated show beyond that very basic one in the 60s kept Cap's image in suspended animation. Appropriately, he was never hip or down with the kids, and he always seemed so humourless and unrelatable in the Avengers comics I read in the 90s. He went from being this kind of ageless, lantern-jawed, super-serious Rip Van Winkle in the earlier Marvel comics to a violent maniac in Mark Miller's Ultimates, who stood for not much of anything as long as he could pound America's enemies, to being an experienced special agent and underground freedom fighter in the Civil War comics and the Ed Brubaker run, fighting for personal liberties. To finally, with the Marvel Cinematic Universe being this handsome, wildly charismatic, super athletic and muscular man of my own age, who, it's worth saying, caught my wife's attention too. But the secret appeal of Steve Rogers' big screen incarnation really comes down less to his 75 year heritage and more to performance, and Chris Evans' earnest, quietly tortured, never complaining dedication to duty really scored points with a lot of people, making him an absolute linchpin of the age of the superhero. The MCU is responsible for several of my top 10 movies, so when I looked into getting my first hot toy, Cap and the other Avengers were the figures I continuously perused. After the third Captain America movie, Civil War, I decided if I was going to get one at all, it would be Steve. But then I had to choose which of his many outfits to pursue. There was the World War II fatigues of the first Avenger, as well as the improvised gear he throws on to rescue Bucky and the ridiculous Star Spangled Man. After that, there was his turn in Avengers, I'm going to call it Avengers Assemble, as it was renamed in the UK, to avoid confusion with the Avengers in general, or the first Avenger. The Avengers Assemble version I always felt looked a little awkward, especially in the cowl, not a million miles away from the skin-tight wetsuit of kick-ass. And then there was the Winter Soldier Shield Strike costume, which was a huge step up, making him a commando, and being tied to one of the most thrilling action sequences in the MCU to date, the Lemurian Star. This one was available relatively cheaply second-hand, and I genuinely considered it. The problem was the Blue Shield, a deliberate inversion of his red, white, and blue classic. Practically speaking, this was for the purposes of a stealth mission, but symbolically this was Captain America being used as a black ops and espionage weapon by S.H.I.E.L.D. Additionally, this figure did not have the alternate unmasked Steve Rogers head, which is a huge bonus and a big part of Chris Evans' character. I rationalised that I would have to buy a red shield and an additional head which would effectively cancel out the saving of buying this cheaper figure. Though that would still get me a brilliant version of Cap. Also available was a two-pack with civilian clothes Steve Rogers for around $100 more. However, while it had that extra head, the additional figure would be useless without it, meaning that they weren't really all that interchangeable at all. And the second shield was weather-worn and scratched, which is a great look and ties in with the marketing of Winter Soldier, but isn't actually the red shield that Steve uses throughout most of the film. I would still need to buy that third shield separately. The first Avenger outfit was reissued here as it makes a major appearance in the third act of Winter Soldier. I do like this World War II uniform, certainly more than the Avengers Assemble outfit, but it's not my favourite. Though for the purposes of the movie, it is used to symbolise Steve returning to his virtuous and simple roots in the face of a complex and morally grey modern America, which has succeeded in thoroughly disturbing him. 
After that came Age of Ultron, and this scored major points with me. For the return to Joss Whedon, the costume department took the redesigned Winter Soldier strike suit that I'd been considering and added panels of white and brighter red to it, effectively giving us the same cap but in an idealized version of his suit. The altruistic colors woven into the modern action outfit, but darkened from his traumatic experiences beyond the brighter, clearer past he came from. And following that was the release of the Civil War Captain America. This drew Steve back to the direction of the Russo brothers, and in delivering a slightly more realistic, gritty look, the colors, especially the reds, were dulled and muted, and some white panels and red flashes were removed entirely, along with the switching back from gauntlets to gloves. For me, it ultimately came down to these last two. I love the Civil War movie. So much. Possibly more than any of the others right now. But I also love the look from Age of Ultron. It was ultimately a choice between bright, if not light, and dark. Both are aspects of Cap that are fully relatable and represented in the films. My conclusion that was that while I prefer the way the Russo brothers handle his character and what happens to him in his solo movies, although it's hard to see Civil War as a solo buffet of super treats as it is, I love the balance of the Age of Ultron outfit the most. The Ultron version released in 2015 was well over a year old when I made this decision and the very similarly styled Civil War versions were just being released. I could choose between a £220 pre-order for Civil War or go hunting for an Ultron online and pay a considerably higher price. They weren't available on any online stores in the UK but my wife found one priced at £300 on eBay with an option to make an offer. Why I'm telling you this relates back to the lightsaber collecting I mentioned earlier. I made an offer of £260 delivered, paid £40 over the price of my second choice, and then naturally regretted that on the first day for a short while, effectively in shock that I had spent more on this figure than I had ever spent on any one toy in my life, nearly twice as much in fact. But I was lucky to snag the rarer figure at that price, and I believe I chose correctly for my own purposes in the end. ActionFigureResource.com Yesterday's Toys, Today's Treasures.